and I'm here to present to you my master's thesis in Annapolis University's program for data science. The title of my thesis is Domain Adaptation and Generalization and Measuring Domain Gaps. So we will first start by understanding the problems we will fix. We will pre present our measuring domain gaps technique. We will also present domain, uh, domain adaptation technique and uh, our domain adaptation for natural language processing technique. And then we will finish by uh, presenting the domain generalization and going through a recap. So the problem, the main problem we are, uh, we are concerned with is the changes in the data. So we can see in this uh, PAX data set, the concept of a dog in photos is quite similar but, but different from the concept of a dog in this artistic figure. Same thing for the concept of a dog in cartoons and the concept of a dog in sketch. So although there are some differences between all of these four images, the model should be able to easily predict that it is a dog in all these four pictures without degradation in the model's performances when trained on photos and then tested on art. So in this big problem, we are uh, concerned with three sub-problems. So the first problem is detecting the changes in the data. The second one is to fix current models without having to retrain them from scratch. And then the third one is to prevent this problem from arriving, from occurring, which is co commonly known as domain generalization. For measuring domain gaps, we presented a new idea, which is based on uh, measuring domain gaps inside the data, instead of measuring it by uh, detecting models degradation. So uh, pre uh, currently people are doing it by manually labeling the deployment data and then measuring the model's performances on it. And if there are some reduction in performances, we say that there is a domain gap. For us, we use different hypothesis testing techniques and statistical tests, such as Kormigorov-Smirnov, KS test, and uh, two sample t-test and other tests. Our service is now integrated as part of Hydrosphere IO version 2.2.0, and now is being used by many of our clients at Provectus and internally in Provectus. So we can see that we can easily select a model we can see here what are the different uh, features it gets. We see the overall drift probability with some warnings. And here we have a per feature analysis where we can compare training and deployment and different values. <laughs> of course, Hydrosphere provides multiple uh, different uh, services, not just monitoring, but and here we are focused on monitoring. We see that mean, for example, we see the training data, production data, and we see the change probability in mean, median, and uh, variance. For the second problem of unsupervised domain adaptation, we proposed a new method which is based on uh, li uh, linear discriminant analysis and quite inspired from uh, GAN's architecture. So our model is uh, much more, it's much faster than the current state of the art, yet as performant. So we can see here our main competitive is du duplex scan. We can see that we outperform them on several uh, uh, on several experiments, and overall, we can see that, for example, image to image does outperform us in this in this experiment, but <coughs> we are still inside or part of the state of the art. Our method works like this. So before applying our method, we can see that, for example, a four from MNIST and a four from SVHN are very different from each other in the latent space. Uh, we can see that, for example, two here and two here are quite close, but for example, for the one, it's not the same. For six, it's not the same. For three, so it's not the same. But after applying our method for domain adaptation, we can see that most labels from MNIST and SVHN are close together or clustered together. So we can see all of them are clustered together, which is uh, easier, which makes it easier for the classifier to correctly classify images from uh, MNIST, which we had no labels from. A, then we took our uh, architecture of domain adaptation and applied it and we applied it for uh, natural language processing, uh, exactly for stance detection. So we proposed a new uh, method 
to transfer the knowledge between English trained models into less resourced and endangered languages. For our example, we took Zulu, which is an African language, and we were able to successfully transfer that knowledge. So we can see that uh, previously, without any domain adaptation techniques, we had 0.39 F1 score. F1 score. But with our uh, method, we can rise it up to 0.54, which is quite similar to the English test score. Of course, uh, it's not as good in all the experiments, but it's definitely an improvement on the Zulu dataset. And then we finish our, uh, our innovations by adding a adversarial reconstruction loss for domain generalization. So our method is built on some very simple components, encoder, decoder, and classifier, but it is trained differently. So we can see that most encoder-decoder architectures are trained to reconstruct the images. For us, we aim at doing the opposite. So we aim at not reconstructing the uh, input images. So our hypothesis is that the encoder is learning too many information about the input images that it does not allow it to generalize to different data sets. So we can see after training the uh, encoder with a classifier only to do classification and then training a decoder to extract information from the latent space to reconstruct the input images, we can see that on the test data, the images were very, very well reconstructed. And this is our hypothesis or our initial uh, hypothesis that the ability of the encoder to keep all of this information is the problem that we should eliminate. We evaluated our hypothesis on several data sets, on several benchmarks, and we can see that on average, we outperformed all the square and state of the art. And we, on two experiments, we definitely outperformed them. And on some of them, we were not uh, the best, but still ranked at least the top two or top three. So to recap, our mas my, this master's thesis combines both industry and research with two published research or uh, published research papers already and three will be pu will be published or submitted soon in this uh, summer we have a service implemented at Hy uh, hydrosphere at uh, provectus and our work is not done here of course we will extend our work a bit further so one of the application areas is medical imaging where we have multiple uh, MRI sequences and we have multiple uh, types of scans so we can see this one is T1 scan but there are T2 scans and there are PD scans and uh, models which are trained on one or even two of these cannot generalize well to the third so that's why we are going to do to extend our work to unit, unit domain adaptation for medical image landmark detection so we are trying to detect multiple landmarks inside the CT scans, 3D CT scans. Another thing which is video analysis, we already implemented a paper on domain adaptation for car accident detection, but we want to take this further on, uh, we would like to be able to um, recognize multiple actions, actions which, cannot, which we do not have a lot of data in for in real life. Such actions can be theft, sexual assault, or uh, such criminal activities where uh, acquiring real uh, video for it can be challenging, not enough at least to train a good model. So our goal is to train on uh, synthetic data and then transfer that knowledge with domain adaptation into real life videos. Another good application is old images and which, as you can see here, there is uh, there are several musical instruments in the image, but they are quite different from the type of images that we use right now. So you can see that this this is uh, I think oud or something. And uh, if we see a, an oud at this time, we will not be able to recognize that this is the same object. But with domain adaptation, we will hopefully be able to interpret or automatically understand what's happening inside different uh, different manuscripts, old manuscripts, in this case uh, medieval studies, and allow musicians or uh, historians to understand the to understand and interpret this era in a better way. So thank you guys so much. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask.